They know it too. Yeah. Crowd on their feet. Celtic fans everywhere. Tatum got it. 51 points. Good team. All right, so Jason Tatum and those 51 points leading the way as the Celtics get the win. 130-118 to 118 over the Charlotte Hornets. Tom Giles, Eddie House with you now for uh, Celtics postgame live. And Eddie, I mean, it, it was almost, it, almost effortless, it felt like, for Jason Tatum there down the stretch. 18 points in the fourth quarter, and they needed that because Charlotte was not going away. Yeah, Charlotte, I think Charlotte came out and played hard in the second half. Also, I think there was a, a kind of taking your foot off the gas a little bit from the Celtics. I think that... They felt comfortable coming in, and Charlotte came back and played hard. But, you know, when you have the best player that's on the court and he goes to work like he was, and also the sharing of the basketball and other guys stepping up and knocking down shots, you know, it made it a lot easier for Jason Tatum. But he just went to work and put on a display of scoring. He was a scoring machine today. He absolutely was. The fifth time in a regular season game that he's gone over 50 points and actually standing by right now with Abby Chin. Abby, we'll send it out to you. Jason, congratulations. You told us the other day what an honor and a privilege it is to play on this day. Is it any sweeter putting up a performance like that? Yeah, we are all blessed and honored to be able to play and, and represent Dr. King and his, his legacy and his family. Because uh, in many ways, in every way, uh, you know, without him, you know, I wouldn't be able to do what I do and live out my dream. And uh, it's been a while since I scored 50, uh, so I needed that one. You were unguardable today. When did you know that you could get any shot you wanted? Uh, I, you know, honestly, not to probably like the fourth quarter, maybe in the middle of the third. Uh, still early, I missed a lot of shots I felt like I should make, but, uh, you know, I ended up doing what I had to do. Your hand feel all right today? Yeah, no excuses today. No excuses. It feel good. You guys have now won seven straight. What stands out to you about the way you're playing right now? Uh, just how together we're playing on both ends. Man, we, we, we really getting almost any shot we want every time down the floor. You know, we're getting a paint threat, kick it out. You know, we two, three extra passes, you know, from getting a good shot to a great shot. Uh, and everybody just playing so unselfish and the right way. Uh, hopefully we keep it up. Jason, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so taking a look at uh, games in which Jason Tatum's gone over that 50 mark and obviously had one of those in the playoffs against the Nets uh, just two years ago. He also had that 50-point play-in game, which is not on this list. So it's the seventh time in his career he's gone over 50 points and uh, just nine short of his career high of 60, which he had against the Spurs two seasons ago. Eddie House, but, I mean, you just kind of saw this thing just picking up steam. You know, he put up 13 points there in the third quarter and then – took over in the fourth and, and again they, they needed each and every bucket from him because Charlotte wasn't going away and it was almost like Jason Tatum just decided okay superstar is going to take over and uh, it, it's fine everyone else just take the rest of uh, this playoff I'm going to go ahead and take over for you guys I mean, it must be it must feel extremely good I mean I can't tell you how good it has to feel to be Jason Tatum remember against <laughs> Miami he was flirting with that 50-point game. And then at the end, he said, oh, I'll get 50 another time. And he comes out and gets another 50. That's just not regular. You know, 50 points is not a regular thing, a regular occurrence in the NBA. Only a handful of guys can do that and pass up a 50 to say, I'm going to go get another 50 somewhere down the road. And he went out there and did it. Super efficient game tonight. Nine rebounds, five assists. I mean, he was just full on full display every which way you could think about it. Very efficient from the three point line, seven for 12. He got whatever he want and there was nobody out there that could do anything about it. Yeah, and you know, you said super efficient. He had 23 shots. That's all he took in this game. Obviously got to the free throw line and picked up a, a bunch of points that way. But I remember that game against Miami and we we're talking about it afterwards and he got the 49 and, and you were kind of making note there, you know, go get the 50. You got to go get the 50. And he did tonight, and, and it was a really cool moment. Scal and Mike both had a great call on that one as well. You could feel the entire crowd. You know, that's why you stick around to the end, because you heard the entire crowd getting into it after he hit that three to get up to 48, right before he got the, the last one to get to 51. It, it was just, you could feel it all building. No, no doubt. You could feel it. He could feel it. Like he said, he kind of peeped in the third, in the middle of the third quarter, like, oh, I got a chance. And then as the fourth quarter started rocking and rolling, he's like, well, let me go. The one thing I like about it, this time, even though they had the game locked up, he didn't say, no, I'm cool. He was like, let me go get that 50 ball real quick. 
Yeah, and, and, and again, you know, it wasn't really until those last few minutes where I think you really felt comfortable about this one because LaMelo Ball, whoever it was, uh, McDaniels just kept coming back and coming back. But again, 51 points from Jason Tatum, and his season high was 49 in that Miami game in late November. So a uh, new season high for Tatum in this one. Uh, you saw some of the other supporting cast stepping up as well. Malcolm Brogdon at 16, although held scoreless there, I think it was in the second half. Uh, but the mm -hmm. Celtics just finding a way to win and just big picture here to get this seven straight win, get this, this, uh, this two game mini series against Charlotte. What does this mean for them? As again, you're trying to create some distance there in the standings. Well, you want to continue to just stack wins right before the all-star break, stack wins. Then you could press reset. You could go enjoy time with your family, guys that are making all-star team and got to part uh, participate in the all-star events. They're going to have that to deal with, but other guys could go home, Chick, kick it with their family, go on a little mini vacation if they want to, whatever it is, press the reset button and then get back to business because over halfway through the season, when you come back after All-Star break, we already know it's gonna, it is a sprint to the end and you have to be playing your best ball going into playoffs. Nobody likes, you don't want to limp into no playoffs, right? And that's not what we're going to be doing, but you want to be playing your best ball as you're going into there. So it's it like it is a marathon, but right, pretty soon they're going to have to start spreading at the end of that marathon. All right, let's bring in Scal now. And Scal is just saying, it. love the call there as Tatum's going for that 51. You and Mike handled that perfectly. But what was it like to be in the building, to feel that energy as that was building up? I mean, you know, Charlotte played hard, but it was like the only thing we kept looking at. I was wondering if he's going to get 40 and then ba ba ba. Next thing you know, he's flirting with 50 and he gets it. So, very, very nice, like the whole thing, and the Celtics knew exactly how to play it. Tatum played it out perfectly, so uh, it's cool. You know, I think they went for it, but it wasn't like uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, right, where, where guys are, what are you doing out here? Why are you disrespecting the game? So I, I enjoyed the uh, down the stretch and the way that Tatum uh, approached it. Yeah, and, and Scout, just to follow up on that, when you look at some of the best scores in the league, whether it's Luka, you know, just where does Tatum compare when, when you're seeing him kind of play the way he did in that fourth quarter and just take over and get what he wants? No one is more complete of a basketball player than Jason Tatum. The fact that he plays on the ball, off the ball, you know, like there are like, like Luca's a better playmaker. Like Luca's better at getting downhill and, um, you know, drawing two and moving it. But like Tatum in the post, Tatum in the mid post, Tatum outside, catch and shoot, off the dribble, relocate. Like the guy does it every, does it all. So I look at him as the most complete scorer in the NBA.